All right, guys, so I just wanted to do a video on the Titanic pumps and could they have potentially saved the ship depending on their size? Now, the Titanic pumps really don't get talked about at all. It is interesting to think the only thing that was working against all of the ocean water that was flowing into the ship was the pumps. That, that was the only thing that was, I guess, kind of reversing the sinking I'm sure a lot of people watched the movie that pumps were mentioned by both Captain Smith and Thomas Andrews with Smith optimistically wondering if they get the pumps possibly ahead. Maybe that could save the ship depending on how many compartments were breached and then Andrews says the pumps buy you time but minutes only and yes the pumps that were on Titanic were not meant to uh, guard against a sinking to where if there's a gash in the ship they'd be able to pump out tons and tons of ocean water it was more to control the flow of water throughout the ship when you're talking about massive ships there's a lot of water that collects at the bottom of it and the pumps are able to circulate that water out of the ship there are several different uh, little snippets of the pumps in action both during the sinking when they were actually pumping out some of the ocean water and also when the titanic was leaving the dock the pumps were uh, pumping out water that was just kind of extra water at the bottom of the ship in the early stages of the sinking when the forward compartments were flooding rapidly you would have had to lift the water up and over the side. The calculations of the initial water flow into the Titanic estimated an inflow of about 500 tons of water per minute with variable rates faster after the collision and then slower as the forward compartments filled in faster as the bow nosed down in a reverse bell curve. Even the largest pumps are going to struggle against that. You know, I had always wonder if Titanic had just gigantic pumps. Really, it wouldn't make sense for any ship to have massive pumps, but just the thought of what if you had just, you know, like a 14 or maybe like a 12-foot pump located towards the end of the ship or, or even the middle of the ship, could that be able to completely stop the sinking just the way the Titanic was hit, the amount of areas that w were punctured? It was pretty much impossible considering there was ocean water and holes within one too many compartments of the ship, which inevitably would have crushed the Titanic unless you had pumps literally that were big enough to where you could flow out the ocean water faster than it was coming in, which is impossible considering how many gashes there were on the side of the Titanic. The ocean water that was pouring in rapidly right at the start of the sinking was so immense there's just no way to stop the continuous flow of water and it would have to be done pretty much right away because the second the ship gets pulled down even a few inches, it's pretty much screwed. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. The ship gets waterlogged in the front and it gets weighed down and the compartments get pulled under and it flows over on top. So you would have really, it really is impossible no matter what type of pumps you had. Again, the idea of the pumps stopping the sinking, it just wasn't realistic considering that wasn't their original goal in the first place. That's not why they were on the ship. The main mechanism and the reason the Titanic was really called unsinkable, first of all, it was really, yes, it was called unsinkable, but people kind of overdid it. I think that's mainly because of the movie in 97, them saying it's unsinkable. It was called that by a few people, but that really wasn't the purpose. But the reason why it was called that was because of the watertight doors. And that was really what was supposed to guard against the sinking. Unfortunately, one too many of the compartments got flooded towards the bow of the ship. And that caused it to get pulled under too far, of course, which uh, really fast-tracked the sinking and made it impossible to stop. It was an inevitable fact. And that's why Andrews knew so quickly into the sinking, really before the ship even developed much of a list, uh, he knew that the ship was done just based off of normal calculations on where the damage was and, and where the puncture wounds were. Now, Titanic had three main pumps with the capacity of 150 tons per hour for each pump. Two 10-inch ballast pumps ran the length of the ship and valves controlling the flow and direction of the water were operated from the deck above. The total capacity of all eight pumps, because Titanic had a total of eight pumps running together, was about 1,700 tons an hour. 
While it seems counterintuitive that putting water into the hull would add stability, in fact, putting water below the center of gravity actually increases stability. This, among other advancements, including the bulkheads and bulkhead doors, led many to claim the ship was unsinkable. During the sinking, some reported that the pumps slowed the flooding of the number six boiler room in the first 10 minutes and after the collision while also keeping pace with the flooding in the number five boiler room. These pumps could not have kept the ship above water indefinitely, but as long as they had steam to power them, the flooding could be slowed. At 11.50 at night on April 14th, 1912, these sections were flooded and the rush of seawater overwhelmed the pumps to w at which point Titanic floundered. So it seems like early on in the sinking, the pumps were working and they were pumping out ocean water. I guess my main question surrounding the pumps, is it realistic in terms of how they were depicted in the movie to where, I mean, it got to the point where Titanic was getting lifted out of the water. The pumps were basically creating a waterfall because they were so far out of the water and you would just have water dumping on the ground. If you remember that one uh, cargo hatch, you know, clip where they're closing the door, you can see the pump just gashing w ocean water out of it. And I wonder if that's how it was in real life, but the theory is that, yes, it did help the Titanic, but only for about an extra 10 to 15 minutes in terms of its total sinking. When it went, it went really fast and it did help most, the pumps did help mostly early on when the boiler rooms were being flooded, boiler room five and boiler room six. I really don't think it would make a difference to where, you know, let's say you're looking in boiler room five, you see it flooded maybe eight feet deep, and then you come back five minutes later and it's four feet deep. That that just didn't happen. It, it, it's inconsequential because there was so much water rushing in. You're basically pumping out one one thousandth or, or one one hundredth of the amount of water that's rushing in in any given moment. So it's impossible to really tell a difference like, oh, Oh, this pump is making this room dry. That just wasn't happening. There was too much ocean water coming in through the punctures in the ship. But either way, the pumps did help for at least 10 to 15 minutes in terms of the ship's stability early on in the sinking. They were never going to have a chance. They were completely overwhelmed in terms of there were really only two or three of them that actually were able to pump this ocean water out. And it is unfortunate, but that is just the story of the Titanic pumps. I know it looks like, you know, possibly the pumps are there as a mechanism to guard against sinking, to pump water out, like ocean water if it comes in, but it was not the main purpose. Now, sure, if there was a controlled flooding to where maybe two or three compartments were breached, they were able to close the watertight doors, you would theoretically be able to utilize these pumps and pumping out the bottom of the ship if it was c under control and, and you could really take your time and do that. But in a situation like this, again, it just comes down to the flow of ocean water into the ship and how rapid it was, it was really impossible for pumps, especially how small they were and only two or three of them to really pump out as much or even, you know, half, quarter, a tenth. It, it just wasn't even close. The amount of water that was being pumped out was minuscule compared to the amount of water that was being dumped into the ship. And also you have the issue of the ship being pulled down, only making the sinking worse. Initially, the sinking was really bad. The ship was able to stabilize a little bit and then it got bad again later on as it continued to get dragged down. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.